In this example, we'll investigate the properties of stairs and create a basic stair example. This won't cover every method of stair creation, but it will provide you with the basic skills required for a traditional staircase. Let's go ahead and start looking in our model for a good spot to be able to put that stair. Now, what we know is that up here on our second, third, fourth floors, we already have a hole going up through that's going to be the location for where our stairs need to be at. In fact, if we move our mouse around enough, and in this case I kind of stumbled upon it, we can see the general area where the staircase is going to need to be added to. But really, we don't want to just rely on the opening in order to be able to know where the staircase needs to be placed. So the best method to go about doing it, if you've already framed all the floors up above to know where your staircase needs to be, is to come in and actually show one of those floors up above inside of your view. In this case, we'll go ahead and make sure that nothing is selected, come underneath Properties, scroll down just a little bit, and look for the word Underlay. And right next to it, right now, it should say None. Now, if we change this from being None to Second Floor, which is an area that has all the structural information in it, then we can click on Apply here, and we can see the second floor underlaid underneath the first floor. The reason why it's called underlay is back in the old days, you used to do all your drawing on paper. And uh, if you needed to be able to know, does this piece line up with this piece, you would take the sheet that's already been drawn and then slide it underneath the sheet that you're currently drawing on. So you would underlay it underneath the sheet that you're currently drawing, and then you kind of trace right over the top of it. That's exactly what Revit is doing in this case. We're underlaying the second floor so that we can start to draw our staircase in right on top of it. So in this case, we're on the first floor plan, and we'll go ahead and zoom in. And we can see by where this box is located in, this box happens to be the flooring on the floor up above. And we know that our staircase fits just right inside of this opening. So as a result of that, we can start to draw our staircase around from here and up and around and around the corner. One thing to know, though, is if we're going to be doing a staircase, it's not in the normal place where we've been looking for commands up to this point. Up till now, we've been underneath the Structure tab, and we've been looking over here, but there aren't any staircases here. Technically, the staircases are going to be considered an architectural object, so we need to look underneath Architecture in order to be able to place them. So, select on the Architecture tab, move over probably toward the center of your screen, and you'll see a command there that says Stair. Go ahead and select on Stair. Next, we can see there's some options going across the top. Now, these options are, where do we want to be able to draw the staircase? Do we want this to be on the right-hand side of the staircase? Do we want to draw at the left-hand side of the staircase? Or do we just want to draw right down the center of the staircase? In this example, let's just go ahead and select on Right, because we're going to draw from the right-hand side of the staircase. Before we get too far and start to actually draw in each of our points, we're going to need to make one tiny little change, and that is we don't really want an assembled staircase. An assembled staircase would be the kind of staircase where you put all the different pieces together. It could be metal, it could be wood, that kind of staircase. The kind of staircase we want to be able to put in here is going to be a precast staircase. Or if we'd wanted to, technically we could have done a monolithic staircase. In both cases, they're going to be a concrete staircase. But we're going to choose a precast stair. Also, we need to verify the properties of the staircase. In reality, we might decide, all right, maybe this should be a one-foot tread. But for this example, I want to put an 11-inch tread on the staircase. If we want to know some more properties about the stair before we start to draw it in, you can always click on Edit Type right here underneath Properties. And it'll give you all the properties associated with this particular type of staircase. So if you wanted to be able to uh, change such information as what the materials of the staircase would be, what the shape of the nosing, which is the end of the stairs, would look like, you can do all that through the type properties located within here. But right now we like the default, so let's just go ahead and click on OK. Now we need to start drawing the staircase in. So move down here and you'll see this box that shows up. Click right here in this square and move over. You'll notice it's telling you how many risers have been created, as well as how many risers are remaining. Revit knows this already because it knows what the maximum tread height should be, and it knows what the floor-to-floor -floor height is. 
So Revit is actually doing the math already. And we can see that it thinks that the actual riser height should be 6 and 59 64 of an inch. I always like talking to guys in construction because they'll start laughing immediately when they see these absolutely precise fractions that uh, Revit produces for these. But actually, that's what it would need to be constructed to, to keep that perfect step-to-step -step height the way that it should be and the way that we need to be built. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move over here to the right, and we can make this be 13 risers created. And when it says 13 remaining, go ahead and click once. Next, just move straight up, and you'll know you've got it because that blue dashed line will show up. And just click once, and then move directly over again. Now, technically, you can click here at the end, or if you just clicked somewhere out in space, once all these treads are done, it's up to you. You'll get the exact same staircase either way. I'm going to click right here at the end of this box. I'm not too worried about the warning message that's popping up right now. It's saying that it might be having a little bit of a problem mollying a little tiny piece, but it's nothing that we should be able to see. So I'm just going to leave it alone for right now. Next, I'm going to click on the big green check mark up here, and that should finish off the staircase. We can see the display representation of the staircase. Part of this was controlled actually through the type properties again. That was some more of the settings as far as where this line is going to show up at what this little symbol would look like. That's all controlled through the type properties of the staircase. Also, if we look at this in a 3D view now, spin the model around. One thing you'll notice is that we can't currently see where that staircase is located at. Well, the reason is, is it's located underneath the architecture tab. So usually if you draw that kind of object, in certain views you'll find that your architectural objects are shut off. The visibility of them is shut off. And you might remember that in order to be able to turn the visibility of an object on, you can come into either your visibility graphic settings by clicking on edit, or just typing the letter V for visibility, visibility, twice on your keyboard. And if we take a look here and look for our stairs, we can see that stairs currently does not have a check mark next to it. So let's go ahead and put a check mark next to that, move down on the list, and click on OK. Now we can see one of our stairs currently in place. But this staircase really needs to go all the way on up to the top of our building. So in order to be able to do that, we can do this nice and quick and easy. Just select on your staircase. Come here to where it says multi-story, and this should say top. So we see multi-story top level. And change this from being none, and we'll just bring this all the way up to our roof level. And you can see automatically, it automatically duplicates that staircase from that first floor all the way up to the top. And the nice thing about this command is, is if you make a modification to the staircase, that change will reflect on each and every one of these all the way on up to the top level. So remember that you can create just about any kind of stair and design condition just by using the stair tool. Let's create a ramp leading to one of the entrances to our structure. In order to do this, we need to first go to our first floor plan view. So one dash first floor. Next, let's go ahead and zoom in right here between our grid lines A and B. And where I'd like to draw this ramp in is going to be right about where my arrow is pointing here on the screen. So the next thing we're going to need to do is come up here on the ribbon, select the Architecture tab if it isn't selected already, move over, and then select the Ramp tool. Once you click on Ramp, we need to take a look at its properties. So move over here to the left-hand side, take a look at Properties for Ramp. Now one of the first things that I'm seeing is that right now it's set to go from the first level up to the second level, or the second floor. And we don't want a ramp that's going to be 700 feet long, so uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to adjust these settings. What we wanted this to say is that for the top level, we're going to want this to be first floor. For the base level, it can still be first floor, but we just want a real subtle, short little ramp. So we're going to make this base offset be negative 8 inches. Basically, it's just enough to be able to step out the door, go down the ramp, and then get down to the ground level. Whenever you have that negative 8 inches set, feel free to just click somewhere out here in space or just move your mouse out here. It'll automatically set those properties. Also, I want to point out that if we come down here on the list, you'll see such things as up text, down text, a couple of little check marks here, as well as width. 
Now, all these happen to be properties that are going to affect the end display of how this ramp is going to look when it comes time to print it. Also, when we're dealing with such things as width, that's going to affect what the overall width, obviously, of what the ramp will be. In this case, we want a four foot wide ramp. So go ahead and click in there where it has three foot and change this to be four feet. Now, the next thing we should do is move over into the drawing area and start to draw in where we want our ramp location to be. Now, make sure this says run. It should by default, but if for some reason it doesn't, just click on run and then click right about where I'm clicking at here. We can always adjust it after the fact if it needs moved. Move over to your left-hand side and just go until the ramp basically just stops drawing itself and then kind of click out here in space. Once you get to this point, that's pretty much the ramp. All we have to do is come up here to the big green check mark in order to theoretically be able to finish it off. Now I do say theoretically, and the reason is, is I could tell that something was gonna be wrong with the way that the ramp looks. If I select back on it again, I can see an arrow that shows up right here. And what this arrow tells me is the direction that the ramp is currently trying to slope. What this means is if we take a look at this in a 3D view, and now I'm going to spin the building around to be able to see the ramp on the back side. Okay. Right now we're not seeing the ramp, but what that means is it's just shut off in the visibility graphics. So all we have to do is either type the letter V twice or here at visibility graphics, click the edit button. Once you've done that, we can come in here and we can take a look for our ramp. And sure enough, ramp doesn't have a little check mark next to it. No check mark means you can't see it. So once we put a check mark there in that box, you can come over here and click on OK. And now here's that little ramp that we just placed. Now, one of the problems with that ramp, if I spin it around, we can see it, is we can see it's currently kind of going up in the air, which isn't what we want. And that's what that arrow was trying to indicate to us is that this whole ramp is just trying to go up in the air. So what we need to do is go back into our first floor plan select back on the ramp and that little arrow there you can click on it too and if you click on it we can now see that it's going down so if we take a look back in that 3d view again we can now see that the ramp is sloping itself down now one other thing that's interesting about this ramp and you may or may not want it this way is right now it's just showing the thickness of the ramp it's not actually making it so it's like a sloped concrete pour what this is, is just a ramp that has a certain thickness to it. What I'd really like to see with a ramp like this is that the entire thing is just poured concrete and it's a flat base and it's touching the ground. So in order to be able to achieve that, we wanna go ahead and select on the ramp again. And this time we're gonna come over here to edit type and click on edit type. Once we do that, we can see a few of the properties that are also associated with this ramp. Now, one of the things is the thickness, and the reason why it displays the way that it does right now is because the thickness is listed as being three inches in thickness. We can also see what the maximum length of this ramp was going to be allowed in the properties, as well as what the slope on this ramp was going to be. You obviously don't want to have a slope that's too steep, or else you're going to have issues with ADA access sort of regulations. What those regulations cover is, is that you have to be able to have a certain slope in order to be able to go up the ramp safely. The other thing to know is that right underneath that ramp and the maximum slope is there's this option here called shape. And right now it's trying to lock itself to that thickness, which shows up here at the top, the three inches. What we really wanted to do is just be a solid ramp. And if we click on apply to that, we can now see it. it has this nice little triangular shape. It's flat on the bottom, so it can just be flush with the grade down there uh, along the earth, right? So once we have that in place, you can click on OK. I'm going to zoom out a bit, spin this around, and we can see that the ramp is in the right location. It has that classic triangular shape, and it's essentially just a concrete pour ramp sitting there where it needs to be. Ramps are actually quick and easy to use. We just need to pay attention to such things as their thickness and their direction based on that arrow when we are placing them.